Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. Mission accomplished. And we're so tired, we didn't even attempt to drive back home yet. So we grabbed a motel room and we're going to stay the night, get some actual sleep, and then drive the rest of the way. A little safer. You know, when you get older, that kind of stuff hurts a whole lot more. But I don't have to deal with that vehicle no more. Now I can focus on the other stuff I got to do. That thing was in my way. And I finally got rid of it. Got it back to the owner it's supposed to go to. <clears throat> okay. Um, let's get into Hosea 10, 12. It is time to seek the Lord. Please excuse my sniffling. My sinuses are acting crazy. Okay, so the whole verse says, Sow for yourselves righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. Let's go up a few like we always do. Start in verse 6. The idol also shall be carried to Assyria as a present for King Jerob. Ephraim shall receive shame, and Israel shall be ashamed of his own counsel. As for Samaria, her king is cut off like a twig on water. Also the high places of Avon, the sin of Israel, shall be destroyed. The thorn and thistle shall grow on their altars. They shall say to the mountains, cover us, and to the hills, fall on us. That statement is in Revelation chapter 6. That's what they're going to say in the last seal. The sixth seal, rather. Not the last one. The seventh seal starts the first trumpet. That's what they're going to say. They're going to pray for the mountains to fall on them and cover them. So you can go right from here, straight over there. Direct connection. Hosea 10.9. O Israel, you have sinned from the days of Gibeah. There they stood. The battle in Gibeah against the children of iniquity did not overtake them. When it is my desire, I will chasten them. Peoples shall be gathered against them when I bind them for their two transgressions. Ephraim is a trained heifer that loves to thresh grain, but I harnessed her fair neck. I will make Ephraim pull a plow. Judah shall plow. Jacob shall break his clods. Sow for yourselves righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. So this is an analogy he's using of the things that they're doing. And it's time to change. It's time to take that ground and bust it up. It's time to... to plow the soil of our heart and become different. You have plowed wickedness, verse 13. You have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies because you trusted in your own way in the multitude of your mighty men. Therefore, tumult shall arise among your people and all your fortresses shall be plundered as Shaman plundered Beth Arbel in the day of battle. A mother dashed in pieces upon her children. That particular statement right there That might be happening right now. Have you seen all the riots that they've had over there? And they're about to, there's about to be a war. I mean, like, it's like any day they're going to declare a war. I mean, it's already been happening. We've been striking Iran, and they've been striking us in Syria. Israel's been doing it. I wonder, it, part of this, at least, sounds like it's already happening there. That was quick. Thus, huh? <laughs> Thus it shall be done to you, O Bethel, because of your great wickedness. At dawn the king of Israel shall be cut off utterly. Pretty powerful stuff, the book of Hosea. I don't remember if I've ever done Hosea. I'm going to go back when I get home, look at my playlist and see if I have. Maybe we'll go into the book of Hosea. Now, I thought I did. Yeah, Hosea, a book for our time. <laughs> think I'd look at I'd look at anyway so the devotion is going to focus on it is time to seek the Lord this month of April is said to derive its name from the Latin verb at burial which signifies to open because all the buds and blossoms are now opening and we have arrived at the gates of the flower year reader if you are yet unsaved may your heart in accord with the universal awakening of nature be open to receive the Lord Every blossoming flower warns you that it is time to seek the Lord, but not out of tune with nature. 
or be not out of tune with nature, but let your heart bud and bloom with holy desires. Do you tell me that the warm blood of youth leaps in your veins? Then I entreat you, give your vigor to the Lord. It was my unspeakable happiness to be called in, er in early youth, and I could fain praise the Lord every day for it. For many people it's that way. They, they get saved very early on in life. Some get saved and it takes them a long time to, to figure it out and come out of that worldly stuff. I'm one of those. Salvation is priceless. Let it come when it may. But oh, an early salvation has a double value in it. Young men and maidens, since you may perish ere you reach your prime, it is time to seek the Lord. Ye who feel the first signs of decay, quicken your pace. That hollow cough, that hectic flush, are warnings which you must not trifle with. With you it is indeed time to seek the Lord. Did I observe a little gray mingled with your once luxurious tresses? Years are stealing on apace, and death is drawing nearer by hasty marches. Let each return of spring arouse you to set your house in order. So... So far, the speech is pretty interesting in about this month. Uh, there was a conversation that, well, a couple of conversations that me and Nina have had about the particular time of year we pers personally think the rapture will happen. And I find it interesting some of the language that's in this devotion. We think it's in the spring. Uh, Nina has had several dreams and visions about that. I've been looking in the scriptures, and every indicator I get in the scripture seems to say it's going to be very, very early in the morning in the springtime. April, May, June time frame, somewhere in there. I think maybe leaning more towards May and June. And I get this from Old and New Testament, various sources that seem to indicate specifically springtime. When the dogwoods are in bloom, when the almond tree is in bloom, um, that's when the, most of your marriages would happen, you know. So it's very interesting. And, and some of the wording that's going on in here seems to be kind of hinting a little bit at that. I like that. We need more indicators and more uh, proof text that uh, instills that hope in us. Dear reader, if you are now advanced in life, let me entreat and implore you to delay no longer. There is a day of grace for you now. Be thankful for that. But it is a limited season and grows shorter every time that clock ticks. Here in this silent chamber on this first night of another month, I speak to you as best I can by paper and ink. And from my inmost soul, as God's servant, I lay before you this warning. It is time to seek the Lord. Slight not that work. It may be your last call from destruction, the final syllable from the lip of grace. None of us know when we're going to die. But we're all appointed a day to die. Many people get this idea in their head, ah, I got plenty of time. There have been, there's stories after story after story of people in a church. Ah, I got time. I, I, I'll, I'll catch you next Sunday. And they die on the way home. Um, they talk to a friend, and the friend is begging them, don't do this, don't go there, don't get involved in this stuff because there's something more important you need to do. And it could be the sense of urgency in them is they have a very strong sense something's going to happen. And that person ends up dying, you know, their life being taken because it was their time. For some of us, it's early. For some of us, it's late. Some of us don't get that many years. Some of us get a great many years. But why would we take the chance? If this gift is being offered to us, why would we take the chance and not receive it? It's a gift that has no strings attached. Now, let me use the analogy I used the other day about somebody giving you a car. I'm going to give you a car, and I'm going to give you $1,000. That's a big thing that they're doing on YouTube now, a lot of comp, you know, competitions and contests. When they give you that car, you have to pay taxes. That's what they don't tell people. Is what a lot of them are doing is we're going to give you the money for the taxes. Now, some of the taxes on some of these cars is high. There was one um, that I saw. It was a 69 Charger that they were giving away. Completely resto mod, all fixed up. I mean, super high tech. And they were giving it away. And they said, we're going to give you $30,000 for taxes. That's what they said. Like, that's a lot of taxes, man. But... Some of that stuff has a high level of taxes that go along with it. Especially if it's a car that's been sitting for a long time and is getting re-licensed after sitting a long time. So technically it's not a free gift. There's something that goes along with it. You have to pay registration, to pay taxes, fees, whatever there is. Almost always, if you're, you win a car in a competition, there's something you've got to pay for. 
So it's not really a free gift. But would we say, I'll catch you next Sunday and not take the car right then? Uh, you know what? I got time. I'll catch you next Sunday. No, we take that car right now. Well, let me not delay. You know what? I'm going to call 10 people and see if I can borrow the money. I'll do whatever I got to do. But why do they do that for a free gift that literally is free? It has nothing attached to it. The gift that salvation that Jesus offers is 100% free. There is no requirement for this. A lot of people will tell you, you got to do this, you got to do nothing. It's nothing. Why do we say on an actual free gift, I'll catch you next Sunday, I'll catch you next weekend, I'll catch you next time. But we won't do it for a free car. We won't do it for a free house. We won't do it for free, anything expensive. We'll take that stuff right away. Let me have it now. See, if I can ask myself, would I pass on this if this happened? Then why would I pass on that? Something that, that car, it's only going to last so long, but that salvation is for eternity. And so whenever friends delay, we've got to put that, that, that kind of that sense to them. Okay, let's say I was giving you a free car, you know, and all you had to do is pay the tax title and license. Is it a free car? Well, technically not, but it is. You know, you, you, I've still got to pay money, yeah. This gift is free and you don't have to pay anything. Would you tell me I'll catch you next time on that free car? Well, no, I take the car right now. Okay, well, I want you to take this actual free gift right now. This gift that actually changes your entire future. You may die on the way home. You may die tomorrow. You may die next week, next month, next year. You might not make it to your next birthday. Are you going to put that off, receiving that free gift being handed to you? No charge. No tax title license. No hidden fees. No, no nothing. You going to pass on that? You wouldn't do it for anything else. And sometimes this is how we have to put it to people in order to get them to understand, in order to get them to, to have a real life example so that they can grasp it and realize, hmm, you know what? This actually is a thing. Now, we can't change their mind. We can't convince them. The Lord has to open their eyes to that. But what an amazing way for you to give them something to think about of, you know what? I, I really, I wouldn't say I'll see you next Sunday or see you next weekend or I'll catch you next time over a new car. And so why would I do it for this? And it will start the, the gears turning. And they'll start to think about it and go, hmm, maybe I should take him up on this and find out a little more about it. And this is what's important about us learning the word and knowing what it says. Because if we learn the word and we're familiar with it, then we can help them understand. Because what they're going to hear out there in the world is going to be any of a thousand different versions of the truth. And all of them are wrong. There's only one truth. But if you know what that truth is, you can explain to them salvation and how it works. Salvation, the gift is free. What happens after that is changes and adjustments and things that he does in you as your life goes on. But what a miracle it would be if that person did listen to you and did get saved right there and then on the way home they still died. See, if they said, I'll catch you next time, they'd be going to hell. If they took you up on that offer and took that free gift Jesus offers, they'd be going to heaven. The day of their death won't change regardless of what's happening. If it's their time, it's their time. I'll be done just a second. If it's their time, it's their time. They're going to go regardless. But where they go is directly impacted by the decision that they make in this life. This one life that we get. There's no reincarnation. There's no respawn for the guys that, that people that play video games. There's no second chance in this. You get one chance and one chance only. And so if you don't get it now, you're not going to get it later. So that's what it means when it says today is the day of salvation. You hear this message now. You had better get saved because everything could change tomorrow. And I have a personal experience in that, in that going to Iraq, I saw this firsthand. Guys, whole future ahead of them. Guys in their early 20s, 21, 22, whole future ahead of them, whole career in the military ahead of them, die on mission not come back go home in a casket I used to ride for the Patriot Guard and we would go and we would escort soldiers that were flown back after dying in theater they fly back in the cargo hold of commercial airlines <laughs> so people are flying on a plane not realizing there's a dead soldier in the 
are bold. Not every one of them, but a lot of them. So it can end for you really quickly. Or it could go on for a long time. Why would you take that chance? If you're listening to this today and you've been wrestling with this decision or a friend is playing this for you so that you might get a better perspective of this or that maybe I can explain it better, at the very least, consider what your friend is telling you, your family member is telling you. Consider what I'm telling you. Right now, as it stands, we're looking for the rapture of the church. And you're going to hear a hundred different doctrines on this. The Bible makes it very clear, and I have videos on this, that is, is going to be an event that's going to happen all by itself, standalone event, nothing before it, nothing after it, and it will be something that will precede the, tr the tribulation and the great tribulation of the seven years on earth of torment and, and justice, judgment, wrath of God. The decision you make now will put you in that group that gets taken and doesn't have to go through those things. The decision you decide now, the change you make now will put you in that group so that you don't have to stay here and it costs you your life and a great deal of suffering because anybody who's here is going to have to suffer. That's just the way it's going to work out. Why would you do that to yourself when you can make that change now, make that decision now and purposefully and truthfully and honestly say, okay, Lord, I want this gift and call out to him and ask him for it. If you're still not convinced, then have your friend or friend remember that's showing you this video, whoever you are, read to you Ephesians 2, 8, through, or 2, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Have them read, the, read those to you. Have them read you John 3, 16 to John 3, 20. It's a fair trade-off. Somebody comes up to your driveway and says, hey, that old car you got, I'll take that as a trade and you can have this one. Sw even swap. Would you not do it? It's an upgrade. Why wouldn't you do that with this? Because right now your future is darkness. Why wouldn't you trade that in on light? Why wouldn't you trade that in on truth? Why wouldn't you trade that in on salvation? Eternity in heaven with the Lord. So at least consider the words. At least consider what we're talking about here. It is time to seek the Lord. For those that aren't saved, and even for us that are, because there's many of us that are slipping away. It is time for us to seek him, to look for him, and find him, and stand with him. Because once the door closes, that's it. Once the door closes, the age of grace is over. My prayer for anyone listening that isn't saved is that you won't delay any longer, that you will consider this before something happens so that you are not caught on the wrong side of this. And for all my brothers and sisters out there, I pray that this video will be a benefit to you to share with someone you're trying to convince or to help them understand that they will hear these words and it will mean something to them and it will cause them to pause and go, okay, you know what? I want to know more about this. And you are, need to be ready with the, question, the answers to the questions. Get the scriptures. It's really easy to find them. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. This is our great commission, to spread the gospel anywhere and everywhere we can. But once we're gone, it's going to be a whole different story. So do it while you can. I'll see you guys in the next video.